you know, and a lot of people have uh, experienced it and they can ask the guides questions and the guides will give you answers. They won't tell you the exact choice to make, but they'll tell you what is the best path forward. So they'll tell you that here's what the road is looking like. Now, whether you choose to walk on the road, whether you choose to walk on the left, right, center, whether you choose to walk fast or slow on the road, that's up to you. Questions that go unanswered. Did I really deserve this? Am I capable of doing this? And uh, when we look back at the lives that we are living, we don't, we may not find the answers in this life, right? And that is because exactly like how you've lived this one life, your soul has lived so many lives and the answers really lie there. So to understand your current journey, how you would look at your past life in this life, your past, you know, whatever years you've lived on this earth, to understand your current journey completely, even more strongly, you need to not just look at this life, but also look at the entire journey that you've been through. Hello, Dexter. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure having you. I am so happy to be here with you, Dr. Mino. It's For the audience, if you can introduce yourself, what do you do? Sure. So, Dr. Mino, I go by Coach Dexter on LinkedIn. And uh, primarily because uh, I'm into executive coaching, life coaching, and uh, neuro-linguistic programming, mindset management coaching. And I help people who are stuck uh, with their mindset in helping them realize their passion, their purpose, moving forward in life. And we've been able to achieve incredible results as a part of that coaching. So that's one thing that I do. The, the second piece is my day job is I lead uh, training and development uh, globally for an organization that's based out of India. And uh, the, so uh, training, L&D, learning and development, uh, interventions, leadership interventions, these are all part of uh, my day-to-day -day experiences at work. And the third thing that I do is I enjoy spiritual coaching. And to that effect, the topic that we are speaking about today, which is past life regression training. And that's something that I um, I am uh, very interested in. I love uh, the spiritual side of uh, life and uh, whenever possible, I give it as much attention as I can. And uh, it helps me, uh, you know, to uh, bring these uh, wonderful experiences with people like you. So I can uh, uh, share what, uh, whatever I know, whatever I've seen and experienced. So these are the three areas that I'm primarily into. Uh, of course, I've written some books and co-authored co books and all of those things, but all of them fall under the gamut of uh, these three pieces that I speak about. It's great. I wish I could talk about all of your specialities, but let's uh, pick today for for today's uh, concern. Let's pick past life regression. So sure, sure. it's a very um, interesting word. Past life as in obviously whatever we know is of today or whatever. Hmm. I mean, and since when we have our memory. Okay, it might be for somebody it is um, up from first standard. Somebody they would yeah. remember their LKG, UKG, but earlier than that, it is hard to remember. And yeah. here we are talking about a very different uh, thing of life, like past life. So Correct. can you explain what is past life regression and how does it that, work? That's a very nice question because uh, uh, I am one of those past life regression therapists who try to associate the past with the present. Let me explain to you why. You know, so, so Dr. Minu, when you have an experience in your current life or there is an area in your life that you're stuck at or uh, you want to understand your life even better so that you can make better decisions about how to move ahead in life and sometimes those understandings don't come through to you so quickly or they're not apparent to you when you experience them you may or may not have the ability at that time to think through the best possible decision even if you do and you want more clarity to understand what do you do you you work with a mentor or you work with a coach. So these are techniques and modalities to help you make better decisions in life based on what you've learned and what you've understood, right? Similarly, past life regression therapy or is or PLRT, like that's the acronym, is about understanding your life. And this is understanding the journey of your soul life. So the soul journey. So what's the difference? The difference is that in your current life, now, Dr. Minu, uh, from all these years that you've been on this earth, has determined the person that you are today. So all of the experiences that you've had, all of the choices that you've made, everything that has transpired throughout your life is who you are today. So if you had to go back and try to understand that, 
what has formed you what in your formative years or in in your adulthood what were those experiences what were those choices what were those lessons that you learned and how are they relevant for today and and how are they playing out in your life and maybe if there are some experiences or some lessons that need to be relearned that you need to visit again so that you can you know entrench those learnings you can uh, uh, make sure that you don't make those same mistakes again you can make sure that you can build on those learnings so you would go back to your childhood or go back to your adulthood or go back to some experiences or go back to some choices so you would do that in this life right and uh, what past life regression therapy does is it says that similarly like how you have these experiences in your current life the journey of your current life this is one life the soul that is there the, uh, this ethereal self that is there within you has had multiple lives like this life and for us to understand the accumulation of those learnings those choices those experiences because those are also relevant in your current life help you make better decisions help you bring bring clarity help you relearn lessons that you may have forgotten help you understand choices that you had made in previous lifetimes because your soul has a tapestry of many 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 lives and though in those lives different experiences different journeys different choices have led to you birthing in this life and to help you in this life those experiences need to be tapped into so that you can make better decisions in this life you can have more clarity in this life you can understand all of those questions i asked you earlier you get clarity on so many of those questions so that is really what past life is all about you know like how they show in the movies it's not a historical or geographical expedition <laughs> when you go back it's not about seeing yourself like some royalty or you know as if you're a king or a prince because there are 8 billion of us on this planet we don't have 8 billion kings or princes or queens right so it, it's just about going back in time so that we can observe we can learn we can uh, take those learnings and we can move forward past life is nothing but an understanding of the soul journey which will help us to move forward in this life so that we have better clarity we make better decisions and of course we get closer to god as well so that really what that's really what it is wow you explained it so simply now i understand it's about the lessons and not about exactly what i was doing who i was not a, at all about that yeah. it's not at all about that it's okay. about understanding your current realities because we all need to be reflective introspective we all need to make the best decision possible so mm. this experience this i this technique gives you uh, you know the tools to be able to make the best decisions possible the learnings which are prevalent and available in your life only you don't need to read through a hundred you know management books hundred you know books of a hundred different gurus to understand the guru is within you the mm. answers are within you the learnings come from your own journey all we need to do is to tap inwards and figure out what those learnings are and take those learnings forward that's it it's about how to live your life so it's not so when so all of the word is used the word that they use is past life because we dip into you know the journey of the soul it's really about the journey of the soul it's about your journey it's about my journey it's about all our unique journeys what are the lessons that we can learn from these journeys so that this life that we are living we live it to the best of our abilities and we make it the best life possible for us and for the people around us for the world that we live in so that um, i mean make me think two questions sure. one is if it is so important then by design nature should uh, help us remember those things or maybe yes. give those learnings or glimpses in such a way but naturally what happens we don't remember and yes with these such modalities if we have to go back is it really not something which we are going against nature so the fact is nature does design us to remember and that's why we can remember it it's there in our memory it's mm -hmm. available to us and uh, if you look back at our ancient times people had a larger understanding of this people would you know all our sages and our rishis and our gurus and you know you, you could access all of this right now over the years what has happened is systemically if you look at it in our education system nobody tells you that you are a soul yeah you, you know there's no learning that i am a soul and that you are going through a physical experience right now the idea is to say that you're born on a particular date you will live your life in a particular matchbox fashion you will go to school you'll go to college you know uh, this is the standard fashion right for most people you get married have kids buy a house 
uh, live or to an old age as a grandparent and then you pass away. That's it. But what is the meaning behind this? For example, why is Dr. Minu Dr. Minu? Why aren't they 8 billion Dr. Minus? That could be a possibility as well, no? Yeah, yeah. All 8 billion of us were to be born the very same way. Why are we all born differently? Is it who made that decision? Mm -hmm. Who made that choice? That Remember the word over here is choice. Who made that choice? That Dr. Minu should be born as a lady, as doc, as a lady called Minu, born to these parents in these economic conditions, to this family, to this country, under this religion, with, with this uh, entire visage that you have right now. Same thing for me, same thing for the 8 billion of us. So isn't it more of a choice? Or is it is it a luck? Uh, is it somebody threw a, a bunch of dice and said that, ah, that should be Dr. Mino. That's the combination, right? If you think about it, it's not really a game of chance. Right. It's a choice that somebody somewhere, somehow, something happened and a choice was made to, so that you come in this life, in this avatar. And so that's how my whole thinking also, you know, began about this whole piece. So yes, by nature, we are designed to remember our past lives. It's just that what has happened is with the current uh, system in which we are living in this world, that learning has been separated from us. So our true essence, our true soul, our true journey, which is the journey of our soul, we are here as souls to understand, to learn, to grow, to develop. That that has been, uh, you know, for whatever reason, that uh, has been taken away from us. Because if it was against our nature, we wouldn't have in our brains a limbic system, a cortex, a neocortex, a reptilian brain. And in those places, we wouldn't have these memories alive. The yeah. fact that we can do this, which means those memories are there. So it's not going against us. It's actually part of what we are, but it's been stifled. It's been stymied for some reason. And Yeah, what is that reason? <laughs> That's yes. what I want to know. I wish I knew the answer to that one. That's a bigger question, you know. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at it in our day-to-day -day lives, how often do we talk about spirituality? How often do we talk about soul? We are always talking about how much money we should earn, how successful our life should be, how much, uh, you know, uh, in our day-to-day -day lives, all the external stuff we get spoken about so much. We And following the structure of growing up, going to school, going to college, you know, getting married, falling in love, getting married, having kids, having grandkids, and then passing away. That matchbox life you said. That matchbox life to the extent that, you know, if you look at uh, um, internationally, uh, for example, uh, when I used to, I used to do a lot of work with the, with the North American clients and they had funeral accounts where they already <laughs> had set up money put to, away for their funerals because their funerals are so expensive. Oh. So you start, you know, from your mother's womb, your uh, right from there till the end, it's already planned and none of this part is a part of your learning so we are so it's just a matter of education so like how you curious out of curiosity reached out to me and said hey what about this you're asking me questions right now you're educating yourself you're learning you know so yes. it's just about having that curious mindset about oneself only and not yes. about somebody else or something else so this curious mindset about myself and what is this all about you know because there's so many books there are thousands of books about it there are learnings about it more than any other you know, stepping into uh, religious territory now, if I may, more than any other uh, religion, uh, if you look at the ancient Indian scriptures, you know, the ancient Indian books, it's steeped into reincarnation. Our movies, if you see our movies also, you, you know, they talk about reincarnation. So all of it is available for us. It's been present for us all these years. It's just that it's not at the forefront of our reality of today. Our forefront of today's reality is a is a reality which is very external based, uh, you know, is a reality which is very conscious about what's going on right now in my life and what do I need to focus on to move forward. But the point is that this reality can be accelerated, accentuated and helped by understanding my own inner journey. Because if, if you are in the right state of mind, everything's possible, isn't it? It's all about the state of mind. Yes. Isn't it? And your, your understanding of yourself can help you get into the most resourceful, the best state of mind to be able to make the best possible decision. So even today's journey is can be uh, you know enlightened, can be accentuated, can be expanded by the awareness of what has happened to you in your life, whether it's in this life or in previous lives. Yeah. So by that design, demands, yes, yeah, it is. We are there. Sorry, yes. Sorry, I was saying that demands another question. That if that is the case, then each and every one of us should undergo past life regression so that we would. Maybe recollect the lesson or we would understand why something is happening to me. Do you feel so? 
you've actually hit the nail on its head. And it's not just past life regression. Each and every one of them, one of us should be in touch with our inner self, with our yes. inner guidance. Right. Because you see, nature gives us many ways. You know, what people do is they say that uh, when I went to a farmhouse for a vacation, when I went, uh, you know, uh, to a nature setting for a vacation, I, I've come back with complete clarity. You know, I'm feeling so refreshed and so relaxed. But when I come here, you know, there are so many things that are, uh, that my intention gets divided between, you know, every, uh, that I don't get time to, that I don't get that space to spend time with myself. But when I go to a nature setting, I come back with complete clarity. So nature itself is your first and most important guide towards going inwards. Because you see, we are flesh and blood creatures. We are made from nature, right? But right now what's happening is we are sitting in this place, which is made out of concrete or made out of wood, which, uh, which is dead you know, or made out of materials like cement and using things like plastic. So we are going against what we were designed to do. Our bodies are designed to be in nature. We are natural people, organisms. We are designed to be in nature, but we are, by sitting in these environments and by operating here in the way that we are, you know, for example, we have air conditioning on all of the time, but truthfully and rightfully so, we don't need all of that. We've air conditioned ourselves to sit <laughs> in this environment right. right we just need to be a part of nature so that's the first thing so nature gives you all so if you spend time in nature your mind gets refreshed and you you have the ability to focus on what's important so you can uh, you can focus and that's everybody's experience who goes into you know a natural setting or you have all of these yogis and all of these people who spend time in meditation why do people spend say that you know my meditation experiences are uh, uh, are amplified when i go into nature Yes. You know, you can meditate at home as well and still have a wonderful experience. But when you go step into nature, some some reason that experience gets even more amplified because you're not distracted as much. Your consciousness, your your mind, uh, is even more focused in nature. Imagine it's yes. more focused in nature than just focused in an office environment yes. or a home environment. Then the second thing is you have uh, people who are people like mediums, people like spiritual counselors who come with the gift of being able to tap into the soul journey into the spirit world, which is our real home, who come with this gift. So you have that. You've got divination signs, just like astrology. Uh, you know, you've got... Um, so, so there are so many ways. And you've got people like me who are past life regression therapists. You know, uh, there are so many ways that you can work with your inner self. You've got meditation. Even if you don't have access to any of these things, if you're sitting in a place, even if you're sitting, one is sitting in jail, doesn't have access to nature, doesn't have access to a regression therapist or astrology, any of these sciences, one can still sit and meditate and go within. But instead of doing that, what most people do is they're more worried and focused about what's going to happen next. Either what has happened in the past in this life or what's going to happen next. And, and that focus of the present gets diverted. And because we are so, you know, and it's a standard thing that right? we all know this. We, we either thinking about the past or we are thinking about the future. And because we are so disconnected from our own selves in the present, we are not able to go within. But that's available to everybody. It's available. It's just a matter of choice. Again, the whole thing, Dr. Minu, is about choice. Choice. Everything is about choice. You choose to come to this earth. You choose to step on this journey. You choose to go through these experiences. Some experiences happen to you. You don't choose to uh, go through those. And you're wondering, hey, what about those experiences? That you know, You can go through a past life regression to understand why those things happen to you. You know, but at the end of the day, it's all about your choices. To answer your question, yes, you can choose to go within, and that will, and that's available for everybody. It's not some. This is not some hidden thing or mystical thing or occult thing or a secret thing. It's just made to sound like that through movies, through you know television, uh, where they make it sound like it's so scary to go in your past life, or or there is something mystical, or there is. Uh, something that, uh, you know, you go back in time and you'll discover something, you'll find something. None, that's all hogwash. It's just a very simple inner journey unique to every single person, which is available to every single person. and will help you make the right decisions. You want to understand what's happening in relationships. You want to understand what's happening in your life. You want to understand what, why you are the way you are today. The answers lie within. The answers lie with the choices that you've made. And past life regression is one of the techniques that helps you understand that journey. I, I like it when you uh, explain it so simply that it is easier for every one of us to understand. On yeah. that, I'm sorry I'm asking so many questions, but you it do. is for the viewers so that they should, you know, get the learnings. And if they are yeah. watching us, they should feel that, okay, I'm asking questions on behalf of them. Yes. So uh, even in this life itself, 
there are some people who know how to regulate their emotions right, right. something happens to me and i choose to respond in a certain way rather than i might choose to react and imagine if i am undergoing past life regression and there is something which i did notice that okay something happened to my body or particular people who have done something to me after coming out of that would that memory stay with me or uh, if sub the body has left in a very you know uh, unpleasant way so so sorry, person yes, like please. that undergoes therapy or regression i mean this session how would their mental state be once they come out of it do they carry it or do you have the suggestion to let it be make peace with it and come out how, how is it so the answer to that is um, you know when you have traumatic memories in this life because of the recency of those memories or even if that memory happened in childhood and you've revisited so many times that memory is still available for you very strongly like a present day memory yes. or you know then there are some memories like when you were if you were to go back say to a uh, first day of school you, a, a memory or a building that you visited when you were a child you may or may not remember that immediately because you don't access that memory again so slowly and steadily over a period of time that memory erodes and memory fades away but is it accessible if you dig dig deep it is there it is there it's just that it's it's eroded over a period of time similarly when you go back into past life when you go back into the journey of your soul those memories that are there even if they are traumatic memories right but because the memory is so far away it's so far away back in time your divine self as your very intelligent divine self who decides to show you that memory by the way here's the answer the answer is that you are only shown what you can manage wow your divine self is a very intelligent soul the soul that's within you will only show you what you can manage as learnings from your present day life so trust in your divine soul because it's not going to show you a movie of oh this is what how you were when you were a child these are the clothes you were wearing this is what you were running about and doing i'll give an example i was working with somebody and um, uh, uh, you know the her soul took her back to a lifetime which was not very recent you know a lifetime several 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 hundred years ago and in that lifetime uh, it didn't show her a video recording of the entire life you know that when she was a child it showed her glimpses that's how, what it does it will show you glimpses and those glimpses are for you to understand and relate with your current life so for example it showed her one of the glimpses on her deathbed when she had to pay some people money or something to do with money and when she woke up the first thing she said or oh, when she got out when she when we is to pause the regression the first thing she said now i know why i have money issues in this life and i was like really she never told me that in the when she filled up her form uh, to qualify for that regression she never told me that she had money issues in the in this life in fact that was not on her mind she had just come through with a curious mindset but that was that was the main thing that was going on in the back of her mind and she was never able to articulate that but then she said now i know i have money issues it started from there and i can need to start trusting people with money and then she started trusting people giving them money and her life became better for it you know because of it so it's it's not so much to do with oh i'm going to relive that experience you it's you're not going to be as associated as you are with your current life you're going to look at it and you're going to there's a sense of knowing and a sense of understanding so so it's not that the trauma is going to suddenly burst open and you're going to you know feel that oh my god i've gone through this trauma again it's more to do with a sense of understanding and more than anything else your divine self knows what to show you in from a previous life and it will only show you those things that are relevant to the now and maybe to the immediate future which are not uh, very off and something that's coming your way that you need to understand now so that you can tackle that when whenever that incident happens or whatever that experience that's going to happen to you so that's what the divine soul shows you and even if it did show you a traumatic incident because you have the gumption you have the ability to learn from it that's that's what it is yeah wow you have said it very beautifully and i like instead of saying past life you would rather say it's soul's journey it's your soul's journey it's about your soul's journey yes and we do have a divine self who who is taking care of us who yes. who's making sure that we are guided to those memories which we can handle at least this body yes. can handle it will only show you what you what is important for you and what you can handle what you can learn from so whatever it does show you uh, all you got to remember is this is my learning this is my observation mm -hmm. you know and uh, and you, one has to go with that mindset so one has to be very very ready with that mindset that i'm going to learn i'm going to understand and go into this journey without any expectations mm -hmm. you know? and leave all those hollywood bollywood expectations out of the yeah, yeah. 
you know, all that one sees on television, all that one has read in fiction books, leave all of that because this is about learning. This is not about your past. This is about your present and using the past as a vehicle to understand the present, which is what you would do in your normal day-to-day -day life. Also, when you introspect and say, oh, five years ago, I spoke to somebody like this. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, you know what? I took this action. I wish I had done things differently than in introspection. So as you keep introspecting, you keep getting better and better and you make better future choices, right? So this is about that. And it's an even more expanded awareness because you're going back in time to look at all of those choices that you made, which led to what you are today. So it's mm. just about as simple as that. Great. So you don't look very old, like somebody who's in their 60s or something like that. Like I, I, you are like one of us, right? Yeah. So why am I saying that? Because I'm curious to know what led you to become a past life regression coach. I mean, was there anything, uh, some experience or something which uh, led you through this direction? Or how did you stumble upon this? So I was toying with this question all my life, um, you know, that uh, we are not here by chance. That it, I couldn't fathom the fact that, okay, I am born with uh, a, a spoon that is maybe gold, silver, diamond, copper. And somebody else is born with a spoon, which is gold, silver, diamond, copper. And and I I can't, for example, for the life of me, paint or sing, you know, and that person can paint and sing. So what are all these differences? Why am I born in this country? Why am I born to these parents? Why am I born in the way that I am born like this? Why am I born with these abilities? So that curiosity of why got me to think that, wait a minute, everybody is born with different abilities, unique abilities, you know, different uh, uh, journeys. And the more and more I thought about it, Dr. Mino, it didn't sound like, like I was telling you earlier, that, uh, you know, somebody has uh, thrown, uh, you know, a bunch of dice or somebody has decided very randomly that you should be born like this. Or a lot of people say that I got lucky. I did, didn't sound like I got lucky, you know, or somebody else got lucky. Or so, so why is, I mean, if I did get lucky, why did I get lucky and why did that person get unlucky? You know, so there must be a reasoning behind it. And the more and more I thought about it, I started realizing this, this does not sound like a chance a game of chance. It sounded more like a choice that somebody either made the choice for me or I made the choice. And as I kept researching and reading and all of that, I decided then one day to also go through a regression session for myself. Once I stumbled upon all the literature. So for example, here's a book by Dr. Brian Weiss. And this was, uh, he's one of the foremost um, uh, exponents of and teachers of past life regression therapy. And I learned from him eventually. But before I went and learned from him, I read some of the literature and then I went through an experience myself where uh, in my own regression session, I saw a young man, uh, you know, with a lungi uh, walking around and barebacked. And I couldn't see his face, but I saw a place very clearly. I saw a temple. It was and it was very clear in my mind. I, although there was no label or name or, you know, or, or, or any placeholder which said that, uh, you know, or a board which said that here's what the place is. I knew this was South India. I absolutely knew it was South India. And I saw a young man walking and I couldn't even see the young man's face. But I knew this person very well. And that time when I had done the regression, I had been to South India twice only. So once uh, to Trishur and once to Velankini, which is, you know, uh, where most of our Catholics uh, go on a religious pilgrimage for. But in none of those places were there any magnificent, uh, you know, long stretches of fields and gardens and other things which I was seeing. So I had never seen this before. And I've never seen the lungi tied in the style that it was tied. You know, it was it was draped uh, around each leg, and th there was this particular uh, kind of border on each of these, um, you know, on, on those drapes, and it was tied in a very different way, which I had never seen before. So uh, I was still thinking, oh, really? Is this imagination is reality? But for some reason, I knew that this person was someone. And then when the regressionist told me that, uh, you know, cycle through the faces of the people that you know, and I did that. I realized it was my father. Yeah. And I had, and it was a rare experience actually, because she said eventually, and, and I've realized it also now after all these years, that people don't generally regress into their parents' past lives. You know, so my father is no longer with us. He passed away several years ago. So uh, for some reason, there, he was showing me his past life, or my divine soul was showing me. So then I realized that my father, for example, was a very busy gentleman. And they, and he was always busy. He was always busy, right? From morning to evening, he'd have no time on his calendar for us. And, you know, I always wished that he would spend more time with us. And uh, he always had this look of a little bit of tension on his face because he was always busy, always caught up with work. And uh, uh, in that image, 
uh, of that boy, although I couldn't see his face, I got that same sense and the exact same emotion that I could sense from my father. You know, and I realized, oh man, that's him. And even then he was busy, even now he's busy. So I understood that it's it's not something that, uh, you know, I should worry about as much because as a person, as a soul, that's part of his nature to worry, to think about things, to plan for things, to, you know, always uh, work hard. Uh, and so I it helped me exhibit greater compassion towards him. Where earlier I was worried about why didn't he spend so much time, I realized, oh, that's the kind of person that he is. So it was never about him spending time with us. It was just about his journey and the way he went about it. So I became more compassionate towards him. Uh, after, and this happened many years after he passed away. So he passed away in 2003. And I think I did this regression session somewhere around 2018. So 15 years, I was always thinking to myself that I wish he had spent more time with us. You know, we would have gotten to know him even better. I wish he wasn't so busy working his businesses all the time. But then I realized through that regression session that, hey, you know, that's the kind of person that he is. And, and that was the first experience. And in that experience... Like I said, I had never been to that part of South. I remember green fields and huts and, you know, a person with a lungi, a different style of uh, draping his lungi. And uh, uh, there were temples and I remember some guards at the temple. I still remember that so vividly. And I had never seen in any books, pictures, uh, movies, or anywhere I had seen that kind of imagery. And it felt so real. That's when I realized that, you know, there's something more to this. You know, I, I couldn't have imagined this in my wildest dreams as well. So I started then exploring it and uh, eventually I went to, to Dr. Brian Weiss and in 2019, May, and uh, I started learning about it. And I had so many realizations after that and uh, what I had thought, which is this is a game of, when I say game, this is a, uh, an, an understanding of choice. It, it is choice at the end of the day. We choose to be born in this way so that we can learn our lessons from our previous lives. Like my father would have chosen to be born with that same energy of understanding of work, but he would have probably, I'm just guesstimating, I don't know, but he would have probably um, needed to have learned to relax, needed to have learned to calm down, needed to have learned to spend more time with people, you know, his family members, and maybe he wasn't doing it, then he repeated that same pattern in this life as well. Because one of the things about past lives is, or, you know, we as human beings, we end up repeating patterns we end up operating in the same fashion again and again and again. Like how the earth revolves around the sun, you know, the moon revolves around the earth. So this whole journey on this, this biological place called earth, the, this place called earth, is about patterns. It's, it's you know, when you, uh, it's about you know, how you have the seasons that keep repeating in patterns. When you have a plant which goes through various stages of life and you pl plant a seed. So everything in this world is about repeating patterns, patterns, patterns. Similarly, when we come to this earth, we also end up repeating patterns. We end up working this and we say, why, why isn't change happening? Because we are repeating the same patterns again and again and again. So we do that from previous lives as well. We come back in new lives, we repeat those patterns. And the idea is, if we didn't repeat these patterns and did things differently, successful patterns, yes, but things that have taken away from our time, taken away from our experience, if we broke through those patterns, that's when the learning happens. You know, mm -hmm. that's when we're able to see things differently, make new, have new experiences, make new choices and live lives differently. And that's when the learning takes place. So maybe for him, for example, that was a learning. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe inshallah in the next life, uh, you know, I don't know his journey, to be very honest with you, but maybe in the next life, that could be a learning for him. You know, so for similarly for all of us, so that's when my first experience happened. Then the learning happened and then I started doing this regularly. Great. And I like when you said that after that experience, you got the compassion. Like earlier, you had this thing that he could not spend more time with us. Or he wishing. could have spent more time with us. So the learning gave you that compassion and probably that helped you made peace with that particular uh, experience. Yeah, it took a big burden off my shoulder, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. So I think this is one thing which many people would, I'm just assuming that they might get once they undergo the session that, if something is bothering you now and you understand the reason why and then you become more compassionate about maybe the feeling for your own self or maybe for the yes. people around you. Yes, very well said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and it could be a variety of uh, learnings, you know, compassion yes. could be one of them. Understandings yes. like I told you, the people, you know, so for example, there was a person who is uh, uh, bisexual and in their previous lives, the uh, one life that person was a male, another life that person was a female, and multiple lives were like this: male, sometimes male, sometimes female. So in this life, there was always this question about their sexuality because they were choosing both. Mm -hmm. uh, and this understanding came through for them that hey, wait a minute, multiple lives I I've lived as a man, and multiple lives I've lived as a woman. So now when I come into this life, uh, you know that journey has uh, 
has made me think through uh, you know i'm i am happy to explore both uh, both sides of the coin male and female as well because this person wasn't unhappy but was always trying to understand why mm-hmm. why am i you know preferring both male and female and that they got the answer they were very happy with that response for example so there's a lot of positive learning as well it's not just about uh, you know trauma being resolved and uh, you know it's not just not about finding a um, a golden key with, which links to a treasure hidden somewhere <laughs> it's not just about that it's it's about learning it's about learning basically it's learning and there's sort of healing as well people have also experienced physical healing as well uh, from uh, you know uh, from pains that they were have uh, that have cropped up in this life so even that happens as well yeah, yeah so on that note as you said right like based on their awareness or experiences of their soul journey there are things which are going to change in this physical body so on that note have you encountered any scientific literature or evidences which supports past life regression is there so any- you know uh, there are loads and loads of books and loads of case studies for example there is this one book called demystifying reincarnation you know it has a ton of case studies and like this is just one book there are many many books like even dr brian weiss has written this this lot of literature by dr brian weiss you know and he, and he has Dr. Brian Weiss was a skeptic. He was a a psychiatrist who was a skeptic in the 80s. And uh, when he went through uh, the understanding himself, uh, when when he had an experience like I had an experience, you know, which was very real, which... uh, So while I was telling you about my father's experience, there were more elements, you know, which which made me realize that this is... uh, Only, you know, nobody else would know these inner feelings of mine, these inner thoughts. So what came through from that, some person stuff also came through. So he had that similar kind of experience. And um, in fact, his experience was more potent where uh, things uh, he saw things which uh, nobody else knew. Uh, so so he was uh, able to write about it. He was uh, he started observing it. And, and you'll find a ton of literature out there, you know, where people have experienced it. Uh, uh, people have uh, even, I haven't experienced this one, but uh, some, there are cases of xenoglossy where people would speak in a different language in their past lives and they're able to remember some of it. It's like, and maybe muster some words in that language. So it's like, you know, you're opening up a book and you're reading through that book and this book has been an experience that you've lived through. And because you've lived through the experience, there is some resonances and you, and those, and when those memories start coming back, imagine when you were a child, you learn say Mandarin and you've forgotten it now, say 30, 40 years later, you've completely forgotten it. But when you read it again, there is some recollection. And you can, you know, you can remember some words and some ideas. Same thing, same thing with your soul journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when yes. you said, right, the, uh, like Mandarin example, as you said, you might have learned it earlier and now when you're going through, you feel that, okay, this has been done or so. Yeah. And yeah. as far as my little understanding goes of uh, the, the session, how it goes is like the coach guides you through the process, right? I mean, coach voice become your guide and then you follow through. Is it, is it so? It's it's uh, the way the session works is that it starts off with uh, hypnotic induction. Yes. So y- your your what happens is uh, right now as we are speaking, our brains are in a uh, our brain wave frequency is is in the beta state. So yes. there's beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Beta is when we are r- right awake, and delta is when we are sleeping. But between beta alpha between beta and delta, there's alpha, alpha, and there's theta. So what happens in alpha is when you start getting relaxed. Yes. So in the beta stage right now that we are in, we are still very conscious. I'm conscious of the words that I'm saying. You're conscious of what you're hearing from what I'm saying. You're conscious of the environment around you. I'm conscious of the clothes that you're wearing, of your head movements. You're conscious of my voice. You're conscious of the thoughts that are running through your mind. So there's a high level of consciousness. Yes. In the delta stage, which is the sleep stage, which is your mind has decided to rest now, the level of consciousness drops drastically. Right now, but between those two, there's the alpha state. What happens in the alpha state is you start getting relaxed. So imagine you're relaxing on a nice chair, and you know you're completely relaxed, and you're and and you're not so much thinking about the world around you. Your mm-hmm. mind is going through some kind of meditation, or maybe you're uh, you're just kicking back and you're looking at the world around you, and you're enjoying your life. It's a good imagine a good afternoon. Uh, where you've just sat back on a lazy chair and you're looking at the world around you. So that's an alpha state, which is the more relaxed state. Now, when you're in that state, you might tend to doze off and go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Just before you doze off, you know, sometimes have you seen images flash before you? Sometimes when you're about to go to sleep, you might have seen some some people experience this. You ha- might see some images flash before you and then you go to sleep. 
that's your theta state. Mm -hmm. So during the course of regression, what we try to do is we try to hold on to that state. We mm -hmm. try to guide you to come to that state. So you're not going to sleep as well, but you're not completely awake as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that brainwave frequency, what happens is you can access the memories which are stored in your mind, in your unconscious mind. You can access those memories. And now when a person is in that state, then we start guiding them to explore that state yes on that itself i had a question so it is one of our listeners question how do you ensure clients experience our authentic memories and not influenced by the suggestion so that's the the answers in your question there are no suggestions in that discussion so like let's look at they are there in that stage now right. how so, would the person knows what to do next i mean you're so going if we to ask them, guide, what right? do you see we don't tell them do you see uh, you know, a big white brown door in front of you. Do you see a white? So we don't tell them what to see. We ask wow. them what they see. And they relate back to us and they tell us, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I'm hearing. Here's what. And then the questions are open-ended questions. So there's no guided imagery at all. Okay. The, it, it's guided to enable them so that their minds need to be prodded, to be prodded to move through that journey so that their minds can start experiencing it. Because, you know, it's like, imagine an old book which has two pages which are completely stuck together and you slowly unpeeling it. So we are saying, okay, slowly, slowly open the book. Now, what do you, what do you read in those pages? Oh, I read that Dr. Minu is going to speak to her mother. Oh, you see that, right? Oh, okay. So what are you saying to her mother? What are you saying to your mother? And then the pages open up even more. Okay, what she's saying is, and the page keeps opening up what she's... So they tell us what they're experiencing. And we all, all we're doing is we're asking them to open up that page a little more, little more, little more. And we guide them gently to, through that process. That's what it is. So there's no guided imagery. There's no suggestive language. There are no suggestions. Mm -hmm. It's your experience completely. And you ask more and more questions to um, probe them to seek around, look around and try to look find around, one. Look around. There's some techniques to help them to understand, you know, how they look like. Or what are the experiences they've gone for? Then to help them move through that journey. So go from childhood to adult life. So as the page of the book slides, you know, when, when a page starts opening, then it opens even more faster. Yes, so yes. as the pages start opening, then you can move through different journeys of your of your life. So that's uh, it's up to the, the, the deafness and the understanding of the regressionist not to push that person to that journey because the page might, might not open up uh, then. Yes, yes. It is about just slowly and steadily, gently guiding that person to move through that journey. Right, right, right. And... Yeah. I know you did answer a bit of it, but it is another question from one of the listeners is, if a past life regression uncovers a past filled with wealth and power and like, you know, you are somebody who's very rich and everything, could this lead to feeling of dissatisfaction in the present life if they do not so, have enough? So as I was mentioning earlier, the your divine soul will only show you what you can handle, what you can manage, what you can learn. Mm -hmm. Which is, it will if, if it knows at that point in time that there is not going to be a feeling of dissatisfaction. There is not going to be a feeling of, uh, uh, you know, why not? Why do I not have these things now? But it's going to be more of an understanding. Then it will show you that. It will not show you things that you can't understand. Mm -hmm. That having said, imagine you're watching a movie. When you watch a movie, what happens is you see the movie and you start reflecting on those learnings. In this case, it's even more powerful. You see the movie, you understand it, but you're in it and you know what the learning, you, at least you knew you were in it. So you're not in it right now. You knew you were in it and you start understanding it even better because this journey is something that you've been through. So there's familiarity of this journey and that familiarity is a familiarity of understanding. So it's, it's a beautiful dynamic because your soul will only show you those images, those recordings, if I have to use a modern day word, uh, those memories where it knows you can handle. So you are immersed in that memory and you have a sense of knowing, you have a sense of understanding, and then you wake up, you understand, okay, this is what happened. So even if you did see enormous wealth and all of that, you're not waking up thinking, shoot, I wish I was born like this in this life. Your divine soul would never show you that in the first place. It would only show you what you can handle. Now, they are, that having said, uh, there are people, oh, for I'll give you an example, uh, we do a lot of conscious thinking in today's world, which is we start making associations when they are none. So there was a, a, a person that I knew who I took through a past life journey. And from all of us, so luckily, this is a friend of mine, uh, not a client. So I could sit down much, much more and explain to this person. But um, 
uh, or even with the client, you know, from all the clients that I've done, I've not had this experience, but just this one person. And here's the experience. The experience was that there was a learning that she gained. And that learning was to help her overcome a certain situation that was about to come up in her life. Right. But what she said is to herself, oh, this situation happened because I went through the experience. You know how we as Indians many times try to connect two and two together. You know, I saw a cat crossing the road and because of which, and, and I'm sorry to be so generic, but we do this as part of our culture, right? To be superstitious. I saw a cat crossing the road and because the cat crossed the road, my day didn't go well. So we give more power to yes. an external experience versus power to what we, our choices that we can make. Mm. So she she formed this mindset that, oh, because I went through this, you know, understanding of my past life, that opened up a veil of challenges. But that was not really the case. It was there to show that, that madam, your life is something that's going to happen to you and you need to understand it. So here's what we are showing you. And, mm -hmm. and you have to believe and trust your divine soul to do that, to do the right thing for you. You know, so sh and not connect two and two together. And uh, and now, I mean, if you ask her and, she, and you ask her that, oh, what about your past life? No, no, I don't go through past life because whenever I go through it. So she gave that experience more power of what she could do and what she could learn and what she could understand. You know, mm -hmm. so that is another thing that we need to live our lives as humans and understand that the power doesn't, it's not outside of us. It's within us. Even if you look at something like a black cat crossing the road, it's a, it's a symbol or it's a sign maybe of, and it's a sign that is telling us to reflect. You know, even if the first person who saw the black cat and had an experience and said, no, no, it is a fact. And maybe it is a fact. Let's say, for example, hypothesis. But it is a symbol. Whenever you see symbols and signs, and many people will say, no, no, we see symbols and signs in life. True, fair. Whenever you do see symbols and signs, those symbols and signs are not an indicator that something is going to go wrong or something is going to go right. It's a symbol and sign for you to reflect on what may happen next. So step back, relax, and think that maybe there's something that's coming my way which I need to think about or think through. So it's it's that is what symbols and signs are for. But we give power to those symbols and power to those signs. Mm -hmm. You know? Like I saw uh, what you call uh, uh, a crow, uh, a crow's droppings on my windshield today morning. So wow, I'm going to get money. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not real, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the choices that I'm making? Maybe the crow's droppings in the past has some meaning. Okay, even if it did, what can it tell me? You know, uh, maybe I need to work hard towards owning that. Maybe I need to, you know, do what I'm doing currently and that is going to help me on money. So, you know, it's not that it's not the external symbol. It's the power that we give ourselves internally. That's the only caveat I would say. Mm -hmm. And on that note, as you said, it is better to take the learnings from that and move forward rather than yes. uh, get stuck into it. Yes. And is it possible that I'm just taking a hypothetical example since you gave some. Let's say in this life and for somebody, it is difficult to speak in person. I mean, in public, right? More than two, three people, the person finds it very difficult to express and all that. And for some yeah. reason, you undergo the session and you realize you were a great speaker earlier or things like that. And maybe with that understanding, will that confidence also comes back? Or is it just that it understanding it and does. now if, you feel... If you it is linked to, sorry, if it is linked to the past life, if it is yeah. linked to the journey, it does. Yeah. Like how you said, if there is a linkage, then it does. If there is an understanding. So it's not that suddenly the suddenly the uh, you know talent will explode within you and you and it'll be like Superman, you know, you'll tear your clothes and you'll come out. It's not like that. It's just that, oh, there's an understanding that you could do this before, to go with that hypothetical example. Yeah, yeah. I could do this before, which means I can do it now as well. Mm -hmm. And I and the way I did it earlier was I worked towards it. So I can work towards it now as well. So it's not like magically some energy will explode within your body. It's all about choice. You know, the golden word, remember from the start till now we've been saying, choice. it's about choice. You know, because if I go through that learning and I see that I was a great speaker in my previous life and then I get fixed on the idea, oh, I was a great speaker, I was a great speaker and you have a speech coming up and you don't practice for it, you don't prep for it, but you have this, um, you know, these words planted in your mind which says that I was a great speaker. When you get into that speech and you're not prepared for it, you again lose confidence and say, oh, how is this possible? Mm -hmm. And then you start questioning yourself, but I was a great speaker. Why did this happen to me? And then one, uh, you know, starts questioning the entire thing altogether and questioning themselves. So that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. you know? So when you, when you go back and you look at books, uh, when you go back and look at, you know, if you have to study, for example, in the 10th grade and you have to learn math in the 10th grade, your foundation was in the 5th grade, right? Or in the 6th grade or the 7th grade. 
and you go back to the sixth and seventh grade and say, oh, I was so good at math at that time. Why am I not good at math now in this particular one? Maybe because I need to go to my foundations again. Maybe I need to visit those learnings again. Maybe some basics are still not in place. But if those basics are not in place and you realize it's not in place, but you still go and give your exam without revisiting those basics, you're bound to make a mistake again. No, So the choice is so important to be able to learn from the choices that you made earlier and now choose to do things in a way. So, so powerful because it tells you that you had made right choices earlier and you can make those choices now. You're not stuck behind this experience. Okay. So if it is about choices, then I would say, okay, I mean, if I just get this understanding or realization, if it's all about choices, whether I undergo the process or not, then whatever yes. I have to make right in my life, let me take those choices or let me try to put my yes. uh, effort yes. in that direction and I will get whatever I want. Yes, it's right. about choices. It's about going and what with past life regression is that it helps you go deeper into understanding of the, what, what drives those choices. Like you very rightly, you know, that example that you gave, it tells you that you've done this before, you can do this again. You've been through this experience before. Here are the learnings. So take these learnings and apply them into your current life, which you may not get when you try to think on your own, which you may not get when you try to resolve on your own. Because, uh, you know, you're looking at what you're seeing, what, what's in front of you consciously. But through this experience, you're getting a greater understanding. Even in coaching, the same thing, you, your mindset is unpacked similarly over here. It's so powerful because you've seen those learnings, you've understood them and it's your own journey. So you, the, the best journey to learn from is one's own journey. You can get inspired from others, but the greater inspiration and the greater understanding comes when you look back at your own journey and say, here's what I did, which is unique to me. And now I can either make the change or continue in the way that helped me earlier. So that's how it helps. Yeah. And even with coaching also, what we do or when you go to a mentor, somehow they give you that confidence that you can do it. They don't say that you become the great speaker, like maybe tomorrow itself. Yeah. They just instill that have that thought that you can do it. You have the potential. Yeah. yeah. And probably from that past life understanding, if you see yourself doing it, that means it is in you. Yes. Just uncovering that the stage that it is in me. Now I have to, all I have to do is just work on it. Yes. So it's not just about, you know, traumas and how they show the movies that, oh my God, it's something really bad that I have to learn and karma is happening and impacting me. What is karma? Karma is a very positive thing. Yes. I wanted to talk about that. Yes. Go ahead. Karma is what, in the word in, in Hindi, karma means what to do to act, right? The yes. actions that you've taken. So what are actions? Actions are your choices. Yes. The choices that you took earlier, what can you learn from them? it's about taking the right choices making the right choices so that your life will unfold in the best way possible so whatever actions that you've taken in your previous life there are some learnings that are still pending and that learn that learning is now that's about learning in this life and there's positive karma as well there's so much of positive karma there's so much of positive things that we've done in our previous life hence we are in this place and in this situation and hence many a times you know we say we got lucky or, you know, I got guided or God protected me and all of that. Yes, that's all true. And it's happening because of the choices that you made in previous mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. So, so isn't karma as you sow, so shall you reap? Is it, it the is, same no? thing? You're, if, you're sh if, you're sowing po if you're sowing seeds of positivity, you will get mm -hmm. positivity. If you're sowing seeds of negativity, you'll get negativity. So whatever choices you make, it will come down to that. Yeah. You know, it's a very conscious existence. Mm hmm Yes. You know, whatever I have observed so far in all the regression sessions that I've done, uh, I've observed that your soul journey is completely unique to you. And whatever your journey is today, whatever you are today, is a culmination of all the choices that you've made as a soul. So you today you are Dr. Minu. In another life, you are somebody else. Maybe in another life, you are a grandfather in Sri Lanka. Maybe in another life, you are a small girl in France. Maybe in another life, you are a patriot in America. You never know what your journey has been, whatever the journey has been and whatever those learnings are from each life, like how in this life, how you are today based on those experiences, the, the soul, which is who you truly are, is going through an experience currently as accumulation of all of these life's experiences, including this one. So what's happening to you today is plus, 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 plus of every single life is mm. learning some all of the lives including this one and in the next one and in the next one and in the next one you know so uh, so all of those choices and all of the actions that you've taken in all those previous lives all that karma is operating right now as we speak even this discussion that we are having you know is a part of those choices that you made to start learning to start understanding mm -hmm. so here you're here today to understand and my choice that i've made of 
being here with you to have this conversation with you is you know as a result of somewhere uh, where i said to myself that you know i'm going to talk to the world and show the world and help them learn about this yes. so and there is something to do in my past life where uh, i had made those choices earlier as well or maybe i didn't teach when i needed to teach you never know what it was but today i'm i'm doing that mm -hmm. yeah so it's all about today it's not about really about the past it's all about learning and applying for today and so that we can have a future tomorrow that serves us okay you know? Can yeah. somebody um, find the answer for this big question, what is my purpose? Yes. Yes, because one of the best things about, uh, I don't know if a lot of regression therapists do it, but I do it in particular, is I also help them work with their inner guidance. Mm -hmm. What you know, is that? Their inner guidance is your divine soul. Okay. So when you come to earth, you know, sometimes when you know that somebody is about to fall sick, mm -hmm. you know that somebody is about to call you, when you have an intuition, you have either an emotion or a voice or feeling and you suddenly feel, oh, I need to call my mother, or I need to call a friend, or I need to speak to somebody, oh, I know this is going to happen next. So each one of us, uh, how we have our divine souls, each one of us has these guides, these guidances within us uh, that also help us understand how to live life. If one spends time, more time with oneself, then one might hear a voice, one might have a feeling, one might have an emotion about certain things you know we uh, we go through this experience day in and day out as human beings we call it intuition mm -hmm. we intuitively understand something which is not immediately apparent to us but a voice in our mind or a thought or an emotion says to us hey why don't you try this mm -hmm. you know but they'll tell you that but you get those experiences as well because see when you get into a past life regression you shouldn't come into it with any expectations that oh i am going to see a past <laughs> oh i'm going to meet my guides you know, oh, I'm going to see a recording. I've seen, because we as human beings have been bombarded with all of these movies and thoughts and images and all of that, that we might have these expectations. The idea is to let go of expectations. Okay, I'll give an example. So I was working with somebody on a Sunday and uh, there was very little understanding and the person was finding it very difficult to get regressed because of their monkey mind, a lot of chatter. So before the past life regression session happens, I put them through a two-week prep process. Mm -hmm. So you prepare for two weeks to silence your mind. When I say silence, to center your mind, you know, some meditation, some regression. So get their mind ready for it. And even after doing all of that, uh, this lady wasn't able to access a lot of her memories or meter guides. So I said to her, no problem. Let's pause here. And two days later on a Tuesday, we, and on Tuesday when we reconvened, she had to go through some experiences between Monday and Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And, you know, and in that state of mind that she was in, and then she told me later on Sunday, I was very pressed for time. That immediately after that, I had a couple of things to do. And today was a much more freer day for me. Although that was a Sunday, and today is a Tuesday. So today I'm in a more relaxed state. And, uh, uh, you know, when she, when she woke up from her, or when she was done with her regression session, she was able to assimilate her learnings even better than she was early on a Sunday. And that day, the guide showed her her previous life. That day, you know, she was able to meet them. So it will very intuitively, your guides, your divine soul will show you what is needed at the right time. So you have to go with that faith. So which means even if you get to see nothing, and even if you get to learn nothing, then know that at that time, the path that you're going on, you know, is maybe the right path, or maybe that is not the time for you to learn. Just focus on the present and come back at another time and continue. You know, that's that's also a possibility. You know, so it's not like there's a key that's going to open the door and the door's going to open and you're going to see everything. Somehow, and that's that is that is the idea. Like, okay, yeah. I'll just undergo the process and someone would show me you are so and so and but it doesn't work like it's that. It's quite sad actually in a way because, you know, we, we are souls and ideally we should be learning this right from the word go. You know, as we grow up as children, we should be learning that this is not some mystical, fantastical a phantasmagorical process this is not something which is out there this is something within us it's not some science or it's not some uh occult thingy it's a part of you it's you it's your essence it's really who you are imagine we grow up in this life and we live this entire lives not even knowing who our true selves are you know from the soul perspective you know so if we had to learn this in schools and colleges and we had to understand this throughout our lives we wouldn't be into this um uh, misunderstanding that you know, wow, I'm going to go through something really fantastic. <laughs> I'm going to go through something that that is magical. It's none of that. It's just your own inner experience. Exactly like how you are existing. That's an experience that you're going through. I have one more question before uh, we part our oh, ways. I have two more. I have three more. I'm fine. Oh, great. great. <laughs> I'm talking about this topic. 
<laughs> that's great how do cultural religious or personal beliefs influence a person's experience and the outcomes of plr the answer to that very straightforward answer is that it doesn't influence oh because you see in this life uh, you could be a hindu in a previous life you could have been a muslim in another life you could have been a catholic mm. so you know it's not about see every religious ex every religion started off uh, from a spiritual experience yes and then it moved into religious uh, you know dogma and, and we as man changed the meaning of it mm. right give you a classic example for example when you hear the word jihad uh, you know and when you look at it in western media for example right yes. they will tell you jihad means holy war you see terrorists bombing all over the place so that standard word jihad that we've grown up with is about war is about fight but that's not really the original meaning of the word in arabic the word means struggle so each person goes through their entire lives with a struggle to overcome the demons that they are going through the bad habits that they have to work through the you know the negative stuff that they've picked up in whatever they see in the world that may impact them negatively there's a struggle to stay away from that and be the best version of themselves so that they can stay closely connected to god so it's a very holy experience it's a holy war of within Mm -hmm. it's not a war of taking up arms and killing people and fighting no it's about your own internal experience so the struggle that you know a human being goes through their entire lives to stay connected with god that's a holy struggle that's a holy war and mm -hmm. we've taken that and we've given it a whole different meaning mm -hmm. right so but if you look at this word itself and from this example it's a spiritual experience isn't it one is going through right. so so we've changed the meaning completely or changed at least how we should view it a uh, similar so when we go through a regression session and you realize that you know you are not necessarily born in the same religion in any of your lives and that religion is a choice that you are making in this life also you may choose to follow your religion you may choose to follow another religion you may imagine dr meenu that you are standing in a garden and in that garden has different flowers different flowers of when i say different flowers flowers are different colors at the end of the day each one of them is a flower at the end of the day each one of them have different aromas at the end one at the end of the day each one gives life attracts birds bees you know is from the same soil which is the earth it's all about imagine if you could each and each religion is like that and you could pick from those different flowers and smell all of them so you have a choice whether i pick up only one color of flowers or i pick up different color of flowers whatever it is but know this that not in every life have you picked up the same flower in multiple lives you could have picked up different flowers over different lifetimes you know mm. so religious experience because it, because religion stems from a spiritual experience and a lot of people say religion is one thing and spirituality is nothing it's that's not the case at all dogma i understand where people have made rules and laws and things like that which is pretty much man made but the experience itself which all religion stems from which is so beautiful about religion your soul realizes those truths as you read through those experiences and when it goes through your past life journey or your soul journey those truths resonate because all those truths the same truths are present within all religions it's not that one religion has a particular truth and another one talks about another truth the truth is the truth yes you know the connection with the god is is connection with god you may call god with different names but at the end of the day it's one god and uh, that and your soul is one soul Uh, you know so that one soul of yours so even if you have people who might contest and say no they are different gods and they look different fair enough have your say but at the end of the day your soul is your soul and you can we at least agree with that <laughs> your soul is your soul <laughs> and your soul is going through your unique journey and in your unique journey your soul may have had experiences choices which belong to different religions different skin colors different sexes different uh, life you know life journeys different economic conditions so it's not just about religion you might in this life dr meenu you, you are you are born as an indian in another life you may have been born as a caucasian uh, indian with brown skin in another life you might be a, you may have been born as a european with caucasian skin in another life you may have been born uh, you know in in the uh, in, in japan maybe with uh, or in china maybe with mongoloid features you know so whatever the choices that you made in those lives and that's completely unique to your own soul journey so, so there's no um uh, you know uh, there is uh, there is no religious experience that stymies you from getting into it because if that was a case you wouldn't get into it in the first place mm. you know you could have me as a catholic talking about this where you know or or give you examples about different religions for example so this doesn't uh, so the experience itself uh, when you're ready for it you will accept and embrace it
many human beings are not ready to accept and embrace it at this point in time because we are so fixed on the matchbox way of life that this is my religion and I will stick to it and everything else may be right or wrong, I don't know. But this is what the holy book says. This is what you know I've been told my whole life. So let me go with that fixed mindset. But one must realize that one has choice. One has choice to accept the universal truth and to live their own unique journey. And that unique journey is their own journey. And one must look at it from a journey of multiple lives. Imagine if somebody, uh, you know, uh, say I'm a Catholic now. So imagine in a previous life I was a Hindu. And by the way, in many lifetimes I've been a Hindu. <laughs> so <laughs> in many lifetimes I've been a Catholic. So for me, for my previous lives, what I've seen is it's been a mix of being a Hindu and being Catholic as well. Uh, you know, it's also another lifetime I was a Jain person. So, so you know, so there are different lifetimes. Now, does that mean I go back and say that, you know, I'm going to go and follow those religions? I'm going... There's a reason I chose to be a Catholic in this life. Maybe there are some learnings from this religion that I need to pick up. Mm -hmm. Some truths I can understand better in the way I've, uh, you know, I've constructed this life. So you never know what's the, what the reason is unless one visits and understands those, those lifetimes. And uh, the religious part really... It never impacts. It's for, so far, what I've seen, I've never seen anyone coming back and saying that uh, because it's my religion, you know. Because at the end of the day, have faith in your divine soul. Your mm -hmm. divine soul knows what to show you. That's really the bottom line. Very beautifully said. So that again <laughs> intrigued me for a few more questions. How many past lives have you seen of yours? Um, I would say, if I would remember, it's a good, I've never counted by the way. It's the first time. <laughs> so uh, maybe around uh, seven or eight of them. Oh my God. And yeah. since you you yourself is a coach, is it like you have to undergo uh, from someone else or you would go to a stage where you can do it for yourself? Um, uh, there are two, two ways of looking at this. One way is that you go through a regression session. So most of the understandings have happened when somebody else has taken me through a regression session. Yeah, yeah. And there have been some understandings where through intense meditation, I've slipped into the mm -hmm. experience. And uh, in that experience, I've seen myself, uh, you know. Uh, so, for example, um, two experiences I'll share with you. One experience is uh, of uh, uh, when I, uh, I saw myself as, uh, you know, a person uh, sitting with, Indian, an Indian person uh, sitting um, on grass somewhere uh, with orange color robes, you know, of a sadhu and sitting like a sadhu with big white hair, all of it. And there were all these sadhus along with me. And I knew instinctively that's me. Now, this was not a regression session. This was a yoga uh, class that I was going through. And we were going through deep meditation and the images started popping up. And it was so liberating, that experience for some reason, because I saw birds flying over an ocean and I've never seen any of these these uh, visuals before in my life and I knew it was me and that's when I realized why don't I understand uh, you know uh, why am I attracted towards uh, Vedic scripture so much you know if you look at uh, the my library I have a lot of books on uh, on Vedic scripture and things like that on Upanishads and the Gita that question uh, got answered there you know that uh, why am I understanding of of uh, of yoga and all of that then in another life, I now, so that was through meditation, through regression. The, I used to, I'll tell you one of the experiences through regression. So I have a lot of t-shirts and an aff affinity for Japanese artwork. And I love Japanese artwork. And whenever I go and, uh, you know, especially if I'm traveling abroad, I will hunt for t-shirts and clothes even here, if you see some of my clothes growing up, I had all of dragons in them and a lot of Japanese artwork and language. And I completely felt drawn to it. I completely felt drawn to the katana, which is the Japanese sword. And I am and um, I find that when I try to learn, um, you know, Japanese, the language comes to me very easily. I find that a lot. And I never knew this. I never knew why. It was just last year that I did a regression session. And um, uh, and through that session, I, I learned that I uh, used to live in Japan <laughs> in the previous life. And so that was very interesting. It was very interesting. And it answered my question that why do I have this affinity? You know, because as a regression therapist, I'm bound to say to myself, oh, I must have lived in a previous life. That's why. But I, I didn't do that. I said, no, I, it must be when I was growing up as a child, I saw it. I saw a lot of, you know, movies, 
which were Japanese movies, or I saw or I saw a lot of Jackie Chan movies, or Bruce Lee movies, or you know Chinese movies, and maybe that's the reason why I like it. I always connected those two dots. I never, you know, said to myself that uh, it's because of a regression. Uh, sorry, it's because of a, of a past life. But through the course of the regression, I saw myself as a uh, as a Japanese man wearing, uh, you know, a Japanese outfit and carrying that katana with me. And then I realized, oh shoot. <laughs> I was a Chinese citizen. That's why I like it. And it's not because of Bruce Lee movies. All, of course, okay. Bruce Lee's movies. And, but, you know, the Asian side of it, the Oriental side of it, it's because of that. And that was interesting. So you can either have the experience through your own um, uh, meditation. It can come to you. Or you can have it through a facilitator or a guided session. It can be one of those two things. Yeah. So and it's when not you said so this complex. meditation, is it just, just like uh, there's a particular type of meditation someone can, you know, work on or... Again, there's sitting with yourself and just closing your eyes. You never know. You never know when your soul decides to show you. Oh. You know, for example, when I was going through that yoga class, um, I felt very comfortable. And uh, I felt like I had done this earlier. And I started, uh, you know, enjoying that process so much. And I was in physical pain at that time. And I was sitting... And I was asking myself, like, should I even go through this? Should I even continue? Because as I'm sitting on the floor, I still remember I'm, I was sitting on the floor and I had my cupboard behind me. And um, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, I was going through some physical pain at that time. And I said to myself, should I? And I was, this was a session on Zoom. And I was not supposed to even be in that session. So that the facilitator only takes 12 people per class. And I happened to be the 13th person. I said, you know, let me, uh, let me join. Let's see what happens. And the facilitator announced to the class that, Oh, by the way, we have number 13 today, which is my lucky number 13. <laughs> you know, if you don't take 13, but we have another person. So I came in last minute. So look at the way the events unfolded. You know? mm -hmm. So I came in last minute. I sat down. I was in pain. And I said, I started questioning myself. Should I even sit through this? Why am I going through this? But as the meditation started happening and the practices started happening, uh, you know, my mind started feeling completely relaxed. And I was saying to myself, wow, I'm feeling so relaxed. This And this sounds so natural. This sounds so maybe in in a previous life, all you know, I I would have done a similar kind of meditation. Mm -hmm. So that meditation was unique to my journey. Right, right. You know, so for somebody else, maybe just a simple guided meditation might work. For somebody else, maybe a yogic practice might work. For somebody else, maybe walking on a beach and standing there, and suddenly the image might come through. You never know. For each mm -hmm. person, the journey is unique. So for me, that particular meditation, what that facilitator was doing at that time on that day, by the, from all the twelve, from seven. 15 days, only on one day I had this experience. So the other days, whatever the facilitator was doing the other days, that was not something that I could resonate with so easily. But on the first day itself, mm -hmm. the very first day what they did, that particular one resonated with me. And I started questioning myself that why, why am I enjoying this so much? Why does it feel so natural? Why does it feel like, you know, this is the words asked me, why does it feel like I'm doing something which I used to do at home? I remember asking myself this question. Mm -hmm. At my home, so I'm a Catholic, so we haven't done that meditation before. And then the images start flooding my mind of me sitting and I knew it was me. You know, I understood it wasn't some, and in my mind, although this person was an older person with orange robes and white hair, and it was an absolute guru, you know, like the gurus and I wouldn't say guru, I would say like the babas that you see on yeah. you <laughs> you know so I was a baba <laughs> you know and I and but but it wasn't a time in a place which I'd never seen before so on google Earth, I would not have seen though I still remember those images there were there was a cliff and there were birds flying and and there was some green grass and I was sitting I said I'd never seen this image before and suddenly I saw me sitting over there I knew then and there that this person is me you know that understanding started coming through that's me look at me you know and it came through for a split second and then it disappeared but I still yeah. remember it so clearly even now as we speak and so it was my soul's way of telling me, hey, boss, you've been through this before. You know, you've done this <laughs> very similarly before. So don't get so surprised. Please go through this journey because this will be very easy for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not going to be some tough thing for you. And I went through 15 days and 15 days, even though I was struggling with physical pain, I forgot all about my pain. And I went through that entire thing because mm -hmm. it, it's something that I understood. You know, so, so that's how it happened for me. Great. So if someone has to, let's say someone is very, very curious after listening to our conversation, they might want to reach out to you. What's the best way to reach out to you? First question. And second is, is it possible to um, do the session through online or it has to be in person? Most of my sessions I've done online. Okay, that's good. Most of my sessions for people from across different countries has been online. Okay. Right? Um, when I started learning about past life regressions, then those sessions that I had were with the co-participants. So those were the maximum number of sessions I did during my 
my training, which were face to face. Most of the sessions that I've done have been online, and uh, they can send me an email at uh, uh, you know coach at dexter dot coach. So that's the that's the email they can send me. And if they look up coach dexter on LinkedIn, uh, then they will be able to find me, or just drop me an email at coach at dexter dot coach, and drop me an email and. Uh, you know, or if you want to add my number as well, they can feel free to call me up and, and speak to me about it. We can put the link in the description box as well for uh, viewers who are curious. Sure. So they would be able to connect with you. Sure. Thank you so much, Coach Dexter. It was insightful. It was amazing. I have learned a lot and I'm sure our viewers must have got tons and tons of insight about it. It was a very different perspective of what I have done my research on. Because it was a lot about that, as you said, the drama, the movie and all that, what they show. But you gave yeah. a very different side of it's all about awareness. It's all about the choices we make, choice to accept the truth, what we have. And it's a journey. It's a soul's journey. It's not yeah. about past life. It's about your soul's journey, which you want to it's take. It's about your soul journey, about your present life. And in case uh, Dr. Minu, your viewers are interested, uh, may I share some material that they could read through? Would yes, that yes, that would be great. So... If you see, these are the books written by a gentleman called Dr. Brian Weiss. So when I went to the United States and did a residential program there with uh, Dr. Weiss, uh, this is the man I did the program with. And he he's very good at uh, his, uh, his regression um, uh, knowledge and his understanding. So he's got a ton of books. And if you look up, look them up on Amazon, you'll see the whole set kind of coming together. There are a variety of books, lovely books. Uh, there's also another gentleman called Dr. Michael Newton, who's Who's got us? He's got several books as well, and you know I'm not getting paid by any of these guys, by the way. But I'm, but I've, but this is a literature that I've read, you know. So, so he's got these books called Journey of Souls, Life Between Lives, Destiny of Destiny of Souls. These are Dr. Michael Newton. Dr. Michael Newton is not a not alive today, but uh, he did a lot of research. In fact, Dr. Michael Newton went one step ahead, and uh, what he does is he does something called Life Between Lives which is maybe for another podcast, we can discuss it, but I'll give a little insight is when your soul transitions from one life to another, we go back to the spirit world, which is our true home and not this material world or this biological world, which is our home. And we spend time there. What happens over there in that journey, in that in-between journey, the life between lives. So he, so he helps. So those practitioners help you even access that life, right? And uh, uh, so you could read about all of that from Dr. Mike, Michael Newton and uh, for understanding about your learnings, which I think is really more than enough, if you ask me. You, for now, at least, uh, I'm not a proponent nor an opponent of life between lives because it's the end of, because it's your spiritual journey any which ways, you know. But if you just want to start with understanding your uh, learnings form of your soul, you could start with, with your uh, soul journeys. The more you try to expect from your divine soul, you're pressurizing yourself to think about something which uh, you know you may not be ready for. So start with your regression journey first is what I would help people. And even if you got nothing out of it, that's completely okay. Which means that your divine soul is telling you that what you no one understand now, there will be a time where you will be even more prepared to learn and that, that is the best time for you to go through this journey. You know, so so that's the beauty of the fact that we are always guided. We are always blessed. You know, we are all, there is always providence who is there with us to help us through our understanding. So uh, seek and you shall find, like it says in the Bible, like how you are seeking today, and you will find it. But when you find it, go through that experience and understand it. More. Don't try to seek more and more and more. First, understand what's going on, and then you can you know slowly and steadily take those steps towards uh, more journeys. So, so that's what I would like to say for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really, really wonderful.